Hello and welcome back to Hirschek. Welcome to the next cozy episode of our Schwarzwald build, which is the Black Forest in Germany, in which we do have a little bit of a wildlife area desert, you know, reserve. It's rather not a zoo, it's basically really a wildlife reserve. Today we are going to bring in the wonderful raccoon. And the raccoon is a bit of a special one because it is not necessarily native to the area. So there are some, you know, raccoons in in the wild, um, but they are not native to Central Europe. They are basically Northern America and America in general. And um, so, you know, they are not technically living here, but um, they do fit quite well into the climate. Well, in fact, they fit in nearly every climate. These little little ones can adapt rather good. Now, um, that said, I needed to bring it in because it just fits so well into the forest theme. And um, whenever you go into a wonderful wildlife reserve in Germany, especially in the uh, western part of Germany, um, you will most likely find a raccoon in there as well. However, um, it's a little bit different to the other animals we have in here. So uh, basically, um, what is in, uh, pretty much in, uh, interesting is that the other habitats are most likely just kind of fenced off real life areas. So basically you take apart like a huge chunk of the forest in which the animals live anyways and you just make this a reserve. That's mostly ha like how it works. Um, and then you, you know, you just keep them in their natural habitat, which is kind of cool because the animals do live in there anyways. Um, but with the raccoon, as they're not living there, um, you will need to give them a bit of an own space uh, in the area around there. So, my uh, idea over here was that uh, I bring them in into some pits, different kind of uh, concrete pits, and they are quite good in escaping. So this is why I made this rather secure version of it. Um, technically, they can climb rather good, and this is why I give um, the concrete foundation, so to not make them jump up there and climb, even though it wouldn't be like 100% bulletproof, but I think, you know, in my imagination it works. And also, I wanted to build a lot with uh, different elevations and stuff. However, it's a good point to speak about that because the pits were a lot com more complicated, a lot harder than I thought. Um, there are some reasons to, to why that is. Um, the first reason is basically um, I didn't get the sizes right rather quickly and also I didn't want to make it look too repetitive. It still does look a little bit repetitive um, to be blankly honest at the very end, but I could not find a way to get over it. Like, um, I will need to use a lot more, like, decals and stuff. I really haven't used too many decals within these habitats quite yet. Um, there's a good reason for that, because this is not, like, 100% the finished version. Uh, the reason, like, like, there's a good reason for that, because we will have a lot more buildings in this area. There will be nice, like, a uh, watch-out tower. There will be a restaurant, which I'm going to talk about in the real-time part a bit more. And there will be several other things that um, will make the face of this area look different anyways. And so I'm going to wait until I've done this before I start putting in all the decals. Because I need to have a feeling to how much used I want to make it look. And how much I'm going to use the dirt decals and stuff. So that's the reason why I'm a little bit hesitant with it quite yet. But it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work. Now this over here you're going to see now took me way too long. Um, I was trying to build a pipe system. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is to give them like a like a drained out canal kind of thing, which like you have these, typically you have got these huge like concrete pipes which act as canals and um, they are rather often used in zoos to give uh, animals like um, for one's shelter but also to maybe sometimes connect one area to the other and then just build a bridge or cross it um, because these things are like very solid and you can theme everything around them or, like in my example, you can just use them as a general like thing that you would put down into the forest and then just make two things connected with each other, just embed that in the environment and then you have it. But um, it, 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 like it took half of the time it took me to build this thing anyways, and I did cut out quite dramatically. It just took way too long and I figured out like we have so many good concrete pieces, but they are all too big or... Fun fact, too small. Like, I think I've never said that in in all my years of Planet Games, but I couldn't find a piece, and most of the pieces that I found very useful were too small. Like, even the finished version of the pipe, I'm only, like, 80% happy with, because it, it just is... <clears throat> 
way too small. Like, um, it just creates this super repetitive pattern and this is why I'm going to hide this thing up as much as I can. Uh, and so I was trying to at least do certain things like with overlapping to make it like super crazy. But you can tell even after having cut out like, I don't know, 30 minutes of, of trial and error, I still found, I still didn't find the right um, size. Uh, speaking of size, the tra traversable area is again such a massive issue here. Um, I tried so many things and on the ground it always worked, but as soon as I tilted that thing, it didn't work. So that was such a struggle, like until I was finally able um, to make this pipe work. And you can see now finally it works and you can see the dimensions, like how freaking ridiculously sized uh, this is in, in combination to the raccoons. And um, here's it, Frontier. If anyone of Frontier is listening, Elt or uh, Jens or whoever from the devs, um, I, I could recall all of your names now, but that's too long. If anyone of you is listening, can we have some like generic pipe pieces for animals? Like, you know, almost like as enrichment pieces where they have like the animation, almost like on, on a let's say, log on which they could climb. The same goes for that, what I'm building over here, by the way, like a bridge. Because, I mean, I, I mean, I get it, you know, the traversable area has to be in a certain way that they can turn around and do certain things. But, like, if we want to use a pipe, we want them to go from A to B or B to A. So there is no need for, like, a turnaround in the middle or anything like that. Um, so it would be really nice to have, like, a generic piece even, like, it, it could be a null piece, okay? Here's, here's me here's me just going crazy now. Like, a null piece that is just a, maybe, like, a combination of, like, half a meter, meter, two meters, four meters, eight meters, like the, the normal stuff, just as the climbing pieces, um, on which we can say, okay, see, that's the piece. It's a connecting piece, and you can build everything around. They will basically ignore the collision around, because that way you could build, like, super, like, tiny little holes or stuff where they can go in, and it will make things so realistic. I would love this feature, because that just would give the whole thing another dynamic, and it just looks ridiculous if these, like, tiny, tiny, tiny raccoons, and, and you mean, that's that these are the adults. Wait until you see the babies cross this thing. It looks like a baby in a gym it's really i it's too big <laughs> it's really too big and i really wish that you know um it, it could work and as you can see the bridge over here the only chance i had is to build it with climbable pieces because at the end of the day the animals were not able to pass over a normal bridge because i needed to make the bridge ridiculously wide and that just kind of looks weird so i used the, the climbing pieces but i think that would be good to have like one Again, either the either the null piece or it is a climbing piece or whatever it is um, to make sure that they go from A to B and ignore the collision. I think one good example of that is the climbing piece that we got with uh, the the gibbons um, because they like with the brachiation. Um, it I I think it doesn't really completely ignore everything around. But you can, for example, build that through the trees and stuff, and they do still do the recreation because um, it's more or less hard coded to the uh, climbing frames, even though it's not hard coded. But the climbing frames are the only things on which they can do it, and they do it like rather free, but on those things, and they do ignore most of the environment. I think that's fine. I think that's that's the way to go. It adds so much to the super flexible game, and it, it doesn't take away from the freedom we have. It just adds another layer of creativity. Okay, enough rambling about that. One more thing I want to add before I have to clarify something, um, which you guys did comment about quite a bit. Now, um, this build over here is... Uh, made for water because I forgot, I totally forgot that they need water. So we just add a little bit of a waterfall. Truth to be told, I like the fact that we have the waterfall in and now we have like a full circle system, which I'm going to actually um, finish in the real time part. But that's just like a little bit of a spoiler. And yes, I did record the real time part before doing the uh, time lapse recording. I figured that's the best way to do it because whenever you do a rec uh, real time uh, recording, there's always something that I find uh, which would have been good to talk about in the time lapse anyway. So I started now to change the order and just start to record the real time part before I do the time lapse voiceover. Now, the thing I wanted to address rather quickly is the um, fact that I, you know, confronted you guys. Maybe that's the wrong wording, but I told you guys in the last episode um, of, uh, I think it 
I think it was the Zizzle Izu, anyhow, um, that I am facing some long COVID issues. And I got a massive amount of messages from people that do suffer from severe long COVID that I was... Um, that is not good that I said that because maybe I don't have it and, you know, um, it might be too early to call it long COVID and they felt maybe insulted is the wrong word, but put off for something like this. I just want to address this with full transparency and um, honesty with you guys. I've, I've been always very honest and transparent with you guys and this is not something that I make up. I've been to the doctors and talk to the doctors and the doctors told me that these are signs are uh, very severe signs of a potential long COVID thing which by the way has been confirmed by now I have some breathing issues and it might take three weeks it might take three months it might take three years no one really knows it I'm, I stay optimistic that it's rather quickly done but at the moment I'm feeling super good but there's no chance I can do any sports or whatsoever um, I've still some nose issues but the most severe issue is breathing issues as soon as I do some more heavy activities. It's not like that I don't have stamina. It's more like a pressure that forms on my breast area and just, you know, feels like very heavy on it, um, which is no fun, uh, truth to be told. But what I want to talk about is that I fully think we all have to be a lot more transparent and open about this. Long COVID is a thing. Long COVID is a severe thing. And long COVID is... Um, not one specific thing. Long COVID can go from a stiffy nose, nothing else than a stiffy nose, up to some ridiculously crazy brain issues. And I think it's fair to say that no one is um, no no one is uh, freed from having anything of this if you face the uh, you know the virus, and most likely everyone will face it. Um, there is no chance to escaping it. So please don't take this as a. Um, I, I don't want to offend anyone. Um, if you if you are facing these issues, please consult a doctor and make sure that uh, you're treated the best way possible. But please let's not start and judge anyone upon a stiffy nose or some severe issues. Everything regarding health is important. And yes, it might be more severe for some people and less severe for others. But it's very important to be open and honest about this because that's the only way people learn about long COVID being an issue. So that's that. But I don't want to, you know, annoy you more than that. The video is going to be hidden away anyways now because of speaking about this. So whatever, I think it's time to go into some more positive vibes again, which we clearly all need. And this is why I'm you know, giving you over or handing you over to the real-time Rudy now, the RRR, which uh, uh, he's going to join you in a few seconds, so enjoy that one. Here we are in the real-time part. Well, oh, okay, hello, oh, welcome on. Um, yeah, so this build, as I've talked about quite a bit in the time-lapse, was a bit special, was a bit different, and it's uh, certainly not done because it does, uh, you know, um, does require that the environment around is done because that's going to have a huge impact of uh, or on the build itself. Um, as you can tell, there are quite some high walls, in fact, uh, which will not always grant you the view, and this is um, simply to also give the animals a little bit of private uh, privacy and private space um, you know depending on how big you are you can obviously have a little peek uh, over well technically you can't do that but uh, as it's kind of cute to see the babies real quick um, I'm just gonna do this forbidden action but yeah as I said if you're a kid like there's no chance you can see anything but if you're quite a big person you can uh, but you know we are just playing with the average person but you can always go up here in these type of little viewing areas and you can check in and can see one of the ah, look at that one look at the little one just passing over, giving us a little bit... Oh my god, this just looks fantastic. Look at that. As if I have planned to have it over here. I, I certainly didn't, because as you guys know, you can't plan that in the game. But that looks fantastic. That looks really cool. Let's just really try to catch real quick uh, the climbing animation, because I certainly think this is uh, one of the best animations in the game, if they do it right. Look, I mean, look at that. This is one of the best, like, transitions ever. It's like almost as, as, as if Frontier got it right. This is so good. Um, they they also did say in the last update that they fixed some of the climbing glitches and floating animations. And truth to be told, I did not really expect it to be like the throughs, but I haven't seen anything like that since then. So maybe they have actually improved that. Uh, so here we have a little bit of a water bottom um, to give them a bit of a, you know, uh, area to get some water because they require that. But um, it's also obviously connected to another area. In fact, it's not connected quite yet. I forgot to put the to locks in. Um, we shall do this because this is um, required. I wanted to put some locks in so they can go up here and down. 
uh, to have like a full circle movement. I should do that. Look, there's a little little dude over here. Oh, look at that. I just love the animation. They just have like playing with the water and it's like about to fall over and just like, ah, it is so good. The raccoon is so good. It's so well done. Anyhow, I just want to move on uh, and show you this area from a different angle. So let's just run down. Uh, it's not like fully done over here. I'm just gonna clean up some things, but as we go over here, a little deer, hello. Um, you can tell that from the lower area, you have a kind of a nice view up the hill. Um, what I want to do as well is we are going to open up this space here so you can really look into this area. Um, at this point, there's no chance other than just climbing up here. But I really want the guys to see like this uh, pipe over here, which was way too much work. <laughs> Not sure why it actually, you know, happened to be that way. But um, yeah, it's done. And um, this is the view from over here. We've got some little pictures picnic benches where you can sit down and enjoy the time and then we're just running up the hill um well that uh, that lamppost has seen better days um, well yeah as we cross over here you've got another little viewing area where you can go up and then just have a little look um oh well i was talking about there was no floating and then we see the raccoon floating even though i'm not sure if it was from the climbing but oh my god look at just how good that looks boy i love it i love it it's just so cool it's so damn cool, like with them moving through here and then just really the transition is kind of smooth, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, we've got a little shelter here, uh, giving them a bit of space. We do also have like a little shelter over there um, below the stone. Um, so yeah, actually, let's just jump out of this camera and go into the free look so we can really quickly connect what I was talking about over here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to quickly check in the traversable area real quick. So yeah, they do have this over here. So we can basically pop in uh, this thing here. And then I'm not sure if they do climb from here. Wait, do they actually climb? I'm, I haven't seen them climbing on this thing, to be honest. No, they can't. Okay. So we are basically giving them a proper, uh, you know, just to keep it the way it is. We're going to go with the climbable log, but we're just going to go with the six meter version. Let's put that on a flat surface. There you go. And then we're just going to put this down somewhere over here. And then let me just plop that one in like so and just slightly in i hope that this is going to be enough i just want to sink that in ever so slightly there you go okay that was like a little stutter so i'm quite confident that this connected to traversable. yeah it does oh look at that so now they can connect from over here to here um we're just going to give them a full circle movement uh, through the habitat as you can tell this is what i wanted to achieve with it and uh, oh boy i can't tell you how much of a struggle that thing over here was by the way um speaking of struggle it should actually be soil uh, i've changed the the ground so often that this changed so there you go um but that's that that's that's the build guys i really hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i certainly did enjoy not sure how the thumbnail will look because there are so many cool angles i think this angle over here is also pretty neat um that's it. Um, I really hope you guys enjoyed this overall episode, uh, bringing in the raccoons just as a little bit of a, a future outlook, so to say. Um, we are going to sneak in the wonderful red fox as well in this area. I'm going to take away a bit from the wolves, take away a bit away from the deer, because they do have certainly quite a huge area anyway. So we are going to fill this in and there will be like another little restaurant build, which is going to be overlooking our wonderful lake area. So that's going to be connected to this entire area. So there's going to be like a wonderful viewing option for both the raccoons and the deer and eventually also the wolves and the red fox. Um, yeah, that's that. And I really hope, uh, yeah, as I said, you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let's have a little overview of Hirsch Egg at this point. Um, I think it's rather cool. I think it's really looking good. This as the end zone um, just gave the whole area a bit more of a meaning, I guess. So, yeah, really hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I think I said that 10 times now, so that should be enough. Um, I'm wishing you guys a wonderful time. Uh, in case you want to support the channel a bit... Wait a second, what, what's happening over there? There's just... Mate, what are you doing over here? You're not meant to be in that area. Um, so I have no idea what you're doing here, but I am certainly sure that you did... Okay. You belong in here. Let me see. There's another one. Hey, wait, 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 wait. What's going on? Why are they all... Like, is there a way for them to... Ex no. How did they... What is going on? Why are they all chilling in there? 
Like, there's no point. There was another one. Wait. <laughs> like, all This is not the safest place. And you just smashed my outro. What's going on here? Okay, let's just have a little look. Because there was another one, wasn't there? Animals. Um, oh, I got, a, I, I got a feeling what that is about. Oh, I think it's when they are down in their cave. And they are basically just, like, zooming up. I think there might be a problem with that. Okay, gonna fix that somewhere in the future. Anyhow, if you want to support me build weird areas in which wolves are glitching through, um, you might want to consider subscribing if you haven't already, because that's gonna give you uh, the, the quickest way to my videos, if you fancy doing so. And also, if you uh, want to have some sneak peeks, as I said last time, uh, you might want to become a member. Uh, there's going to be something special for the members in regards to Yosemite Valley. Um, I'm gonna put this in the member area rather soon so if you guys are excited for Yosemite here's a little nod to you if you are fans of Yosemite this might be for you but other than that I hope you guys have a good time stay safe everyone have a wonderful time and goodbye